Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher here, and today we're driving my personal 2006 Porsche Cayman S. This is powered by a 3.4 liter naturally aspirated flat six. Power is sent to the rear wheels via a six speed manual transmission. This car makes 295 horsepower and 251 foot pounds of torque. It costs about 70 grand when it was new. Now it's worth about half that, but uh, I'm excited to take you guys out on the road in this car today. I'm excited to uh, share some of my ownership impressions, what it's been like to own this car, how I came about buying it. And uh, well, first we'll walk you around this Cayman S and then we'll take it out on the road. So this is pretty much my ideal spec 987.1 Cayman S. It's guards red over natural brown interior. It's got Carrera sport wheels. And honestly, I looked for so long to find this exact spec. So when this one popped up, I had to have it. I flew all the way down to Virginia, drove it all the way back up to Michigan, and I've owned it now for just about three years. It's been the best car I've ever owned, and I'm super excited to finally feature this car on the channel. I know we've had this car on the channel in a comparison with the new 718 Cayman GTS 4 liter, but we haven't had a standalone video for this brilliant, brilliant car yet. So I'm excited to take you out on the road. We'll uh, do some spirited driving, we'll row through the gears, and we'll blow some of the dust off of this car because it's been sitting for quite a while. Admittedly, I've only driven it about 330 miles this year. It's embarrassing, I know, but with all of the press cars that we go through, sometimes it's challenging to actually get your crap together and drive your personal car. So let's walk around this thing. We'll take a look in the frunk and in the trunk, of course, being that this is a mid-engine car, the Cayman, it has two trunks. It's got one in the front and one in the back. So let's take a look here at the frunk first. Pretty standard frunk, just like you get on any Porsche. As you can see here, Got our little 987 sticker there on the uh, bottom side. Battery sits right in there, but honestly, this is a really practical space, a very usable space. I've gotten groceries tons of times in this car and it fits just about everything you need between the two trunks. Let's take a look now at the rear trunk. A little bit more solid feeling. I appreciate that they give you very quick and easy switches there on the uh, driver's door sill. So as you can see back here, you've got a ton of room as well. You can fit things that are kind of long. Little stabilizer right there. I mean, you could probably put a set of skis back here. They might intrude into the cabin slightly. Got a little uh, door right here to fill engine oil and whatever else that is right there. I don't know, I just dealer service my car, forgive me. A uh, little cargo net right here. Yeah, there's the rear trunk. Uh, deployable rear spoiler. It does have active aero that comes up at, I believe, around 50 miles per hour. This car has been debadged. Normally it would have a Cayman S badge on the back, but the previous owner debadged it and the badge is actually in the trunk under that uh, little cargo net. But honestly, in my opinion, this is the best looking Cayman there's ever been. Of course, I'm biased because I own it. But um, I just, I think the Caymans have just gotten worse looking throughout the years. I love the kind of bubbly, like very swoopy hips and everything about this car. I think that it looks absolutely fabulous. And plus these Carrera Sport wheels, they just bring everything together to make this car look fantastic. So let's go ahead, hop in. Of course, uh, I've got my Porsche keychain here on my key. So this is actually a pretty rare option for a Cayman to have natural brown interior. You'll see this interior more commonly on 911s of this era, the 997 cars, but I've only ever seen about four or five Caymans in total that have natural brown interior. Um, and I've actually never seen another one that's guards red over natural brown. So if any of you guys know of any other guards red over natural brown Caymans, let me know because I would love to see them. Pretty basic interior. We've just got the comfort seats. We've got no sport chrono, but we do have a sport steering wheel. So that is cool. We've got Bose audio in this car. Um, and then I have a power seat over here with memory, but otherwise not too many luxury features here in the interior. I don't have the big screen, which I'm kind of happy about because I don't turn this on ever anyways. And I don't even have heated seats in this car. This car originally came from Texas. So whoever spec'd it figured, well, I don't really need heated seats. 
Black headliner on this car, which has been replaced. Common issue with 987s is the headliners fall down, but luckily this one has been sorted. Let's go ahead and start this up so you guys can hear that 3.4 liter flat six. It is already warmed up, so you won't be able to hear it idle up very much. Cool. All right, well, I don't really want to sit around. Let's go ahead and take this Cayman S out on the road so you guys can all see what it's like to drive. It's interesting to me now that I've driven some newer Porsches, how similar everything still feels to this generation of car. The clutch action, the shifter action, the steering feel, they've retained everything. And it's really, really glorious. Oh, even if the ride's a little bit harsh. <laughs> Such a smooth powertrain in this car. Very easy to drive. Clutch grab point is very obvious. 388 power, 295 horsepower, 251 foot pounds of torque, and it feels healthy. The gears are pretty long in this car, and this is kind of something that Porsche always does. Super easy car to rev match downshift. It's a pretty happy to rev engine. <laughs> so why wouldn't we? <laughs> it's a fun car to row through the gears in. I know there can be an argument made about, you know, either a pro or a con for these really long gears in this car, but sometimes it's fun to have some longer gears in a sports car. And if that's your thing, well then Porsche is the car for you. So how's this thing been to own? Well, I've owned it now for just about three years and honestly, it's been pretty good. If you can gloss over the expensive annual services at the Porsche dealership, I know of course it could be argued that I could be doing service myself, but considering that this is a mid-engine vehicle that has to be on a perfectly flat surface to do oil changes and all this stuff. I'd rather just pay the $300 and have the Porsche dealership do it. I know, make fun of me in the comments for that. But that's honestly just how I feel about all of that stuff. Otherwise, a lot of maintenance was done on this car before I bought it. It got a new set of spark plugs, coils, water pump, all of the normal stuff you're supposed to do on a 987 Cayman at 30,000 miles. So luckily all of that was completed on this car and um, it shouldn't be due for another service like that for a little while longer. I bought this car with about 32,000 miles on it, and um, I'm just about to hit, actually possibly on this drive, 36,000. So <laughs> I haven't driven it too much. Um, this car actually served as my daily driver for a little bit while I was at college during fair weather months. I did actually drive this car to campus and back, which made my morning commute pretty fun. set of Michelin Pilot Super Sports. The only thing with a mid-engine car is sometimes it'll snap really bad. And I have had a couple of, shall we say, oh crap moments in this car where you're going around a corner really hard. And um, generally with mid-engine cars, when they go, they really go. So you have to really be good about catching it. Luckily though, PSM is a super good traction control system. And um, it has saved me a couple of times and uh, also saved Charlie from Daily Motor a couple times when he had his Boxster. So good on PSM um, for just being a good traction control system and even dating back to these, you know, 987 and 986 generation cars, it has always been a pretty reliable system. Otherwise though, I mean, it's been a really good car to own. It's only got, you know, 35,000 miles on it and it still feels pretty fresh. I was talking earlier about how this car really just, um, you know, feels like a new Porsche still. Pulls strong there up to the 7,300 RPM red line. Yeah. 
and there's just so much torque everywhere. <laughs> gear has got to be like 90 something miles per hour <laughs> it's just such a healthy amount of power in this car this thing weighs just about 3,000 pounds in fact it's just under it's like 2950 so you know 300 horsepower 3,000 pounds pretty good it, it's, it's a healthy amount of power I want to say when this car was new 0 to 60 was tested in like the four and a half second range but um, this car is an open differential and they don't really like to be launched very much. If you get a 987.2 car, those cars are a little bit more robust and they can take more abuse. But these 987.1 cars, so cars made from 2006 to 2008, they're a little bit more fragile. They fixed a lot of the issues in the .2 generation from 2009 to 2012, so the second generation of 987. They got a mild cosmetic facelift and butt lift they got a mild interior facelift and um, they actually put an entirely different engine in that car that doesn't have IMS and um, they also gave you the option to spec it with a limited slip differential so if you're going to actually buy one of these cars to track it and really like abuse it then I would 100% say go for a 987.2 you know you got to pick where your priorities are but for something you're just going to drive around on the street I wouldn't see any problem with just having a 987.1 and um, you know it would be fine as long as you get one that's had its maintenance done um, get a DME read which you know shows you how the engine's been treated if anyone's ever missed a gear and money shifted it it'll tell you that but would I recommend buying a 987.1 Cayman S yes I would and I'd also recommend if you don't want to you know throw out the 30 grand for a Cayman S you can throw like 23 to 24 thousand for a Cayman base which is, you know, it looks exactly the same. It's just got a slightly smaller engine. Am I letting me go? Yes, he is for his squad. It's just got a slightly smaller engine, and instead of a six-speed transmission, it has a five-speed. And if you're not into the manual gearbox, um, you can also have a five-speed Tiptronic <laughs> automatic. These cars were made in the days before PDK, back when we had the Tiptronic gearbox in... Uh, in Porsches so that's your choice but um, yeah guys I mean I've had a great time with this car I don't plan on ever selling it I really just want to keep it forever it's uh, it's a pretty special car to me and this is one of those cars where if you're having a bad day you can go out take it for a drive and it just makes everything better and um, that's why this car is important to me because it's 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 a mood lifter it's it's almost like an escape from reality and it's just a special little thing it's my little mid-engined sports car and I quite like it and um, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere Camaro ZL1 there torque band comes in kind of late you really don't feel that pull until after 4,000 rpm that's okay because this car is fun to uh, to drive up in that power band anyways you do have some torque you know I, I have enough torque but where this car really starts to pull is right around 4,000 rpm as far as comparing driving experience to the new Cayman and, and the new Porsches in general like I said earlier in the video they've really been able to kind of evolve that driving experience but keep it Porsche the fact that I've been able to drive some older Porsches and some newer Porsches really solidifies that, you know, Porsche in general is the driver's car. They do such a good job just making everything feel so proper. Like this shifter feels unlike any other shifter in any other car. It's the same story for new, for newer Porsches. It feels like you're rotating over a ball. You know, it, it doesn't feel like a normal shifter where you're like, okay, I've got all these separate gears. This feels like it's a ball and you're like rotating over it. If, if, Hopefully that makes sense. 
And admittedly, I've stolen that journalist description from the Topher, but this is going on the Topher channel, so I feel like it's okay to say that. Oh, God. The ride is slightly rough and the interior does rattle a little bit, but I don't care because this car is not meant to be comfortable. It's not meant to be a grand touring machine that can go, you know, comfortably on long trips. But I did drive it back from Virginia and it did that with no problem. And I was decently comfortable the whole time, so. Yeah. Interior quality in these 987 cars certainly isn't the best. As you can see, there's some like paint chipping off of the pillar trim. And um, as I'm sure you heard over some of the bumps, it does rattle um, quite a bit. But honestly, for what this car is and you know what it provides, I really think it's one of the biggest bargains on the market right now, even with the current value of these cars. And I think as the used car market gets back to normal and you're able to get these cars for around um, you know, twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollars again. I would strongly recommend it. So, thank you guys for watching. I definitely want to post more videos on this Cayman S here on the Topher channel because it'll just give me another excuse to drive it. Um, if you want to see a couple more videos on this car, uh, head over to my personal channel, Topher Drives. If you guys aren't familiar, I have my own channel where I kind of focus more on my personal cars and, and show those off. Um, so, we'll have that link down below for you. But uh, that'll wrap it up for us today. If you guys have any questions about the Cayman S, comment down below and um, I'll scroll through the comments and see if I can answer anything um, to help you guys out. But that'll wrap it up for us today. Again, thanks for watching and take care.